here have been observing the anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki every year, not just big event years, <laughs> big anniversary years. Um, but um, this year, being the 75th, we decided to make a bigger splash with these posters. It's um, important to remember the power and the danger of nuclear weapons every year, <laughs> all the time that must we, um, and to push for non-proliferation of weapons, for a policy of, at the very least, no first use by the U.S., by the, those who hold them. My husband was very involved in peace activities all his life. And I tended to let him be the one to be active during most of his life. However, one of the one of the demonstrations that really interested me was this one called the ribbon, in which people made panels to show what they would not want to lose in a nuclear war. A group of us, a uh, book discussion group of us, uh, made a ribbon to include in it. And we didn't want to lose um, what was it, literature and the arts. I think it was. I don't know what happened to that panel. I mean, that was a huge, huge demonstration. The person who started it, her aim was to get enough ribbons to encircle the Pentagon. But they got enough to encircle not only the Pentagon, but all the way up the mall. I think they went all the way around the Capitol. I mean, that's quite a distance if you can imagine. Because we, the story of Sudako, so I had recruited people in Greenville. I think I went to the co-op nursery to teach them how to make the cranes, the peace cranes. Um, and taught people about how to make them, but also learning about the atrocities of, of bombing Japan. I'm here because we still have to be reminded, reminded, reminded. I did not say the guy's name, but the 45th President of the United States, I pray he doesn't set one off. I pray. Um, these, the, the uh, <clears throat> What happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki is so little compared to the power of our current um, atomic missiles that we have. We, it, it will destroy the world as the coronavirus kind of is, but it would destroy the world if we let him do that. And my understanding is he has complete power with that. Does he have complete power to do that? I'm terrified, but I'm here because I appreciate that Greenbelt understands we still need to be doing this and I'm here because I want to help educate everybody else that we can't look aside when there's so many other horrible things going on but this still is a critical one. The posters are to remind us of what happened 75 years ago in, in Nagasaki and Hiroshima and, and just how destructive these bombs are. What a lot of people don't realize was that these were just a very beginning kind of bomb. They have since made bombs that are more effective. The kind that are out there stationed all around the world now are way more destructive than these. It's as if this isn't enough. This is terrible. But they're even more destructive than these. I have a friend who was in Nagasaki at the time. She was a born in this country of Japanese parents so she did have Japanese background, but was an American citizen. Her family happened to go back to Nagasaki to visit relatives in 1941, and they got caught there by um, Pearl Harbor. So they had to stay there throughout the whole war. And they were probably treated better there than we treated many of the Japanese people here. Her relative's house was on the very outskirts of Nagasaki. And Nagasaki is, is rather hilly. I understand Hiroshima is pretty flat, so in Hiroshima the destruction just could go way out very fast. But Nagasaki is, is more hilly, which gave the outer outlying regions more protection. So their home was not destroyed, her relative's home was not destroyed in the blast, but afterwards the fires from the blast spread out there and her relatives lost everything they owned.
Everyone is welcome to um, um, email just peacepg at earthlink.net to be involved with our ongoing campaign on this and other peace-related issues.